the best and worst pictures rank worst to best from the 1940s. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm All ready. All right, me too. Let's go for it. Number 10, I have Rebecca. It's a zero. Hamlet, it's a zero. Hamlet, it's a zero. Dude, Rebecca is a zero. Rebecca's at least a one. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it bad. is. It's awful. It is awful. You know, it's what's terrible. Worse? The and play, it's Hamlet. <laughs> I didn't like the fucking boring play, Hamlet. The best part was at the very end where we were all like, those dudes are tagging Schmeet. All right, number nine, Hamlet. Rebecca. Going my way. Fuck that movie. While we were getting ready for this, all three of us, while we were writing down our lists, looked at it and went, what the fuck was going my way? I guess I should start since I'm the outlier not having Hamlet as the worst one. It's a one out of ten because the sword fight was okay. That's it. That's one. <laughs> that's a that's one not worth a point. That's part of a scene it's in okay. a 20 hour movie. It's okay. I think it's fine. Not the movie. The movie's bad. But yeah, it's yeah, 9 out of 10. one fine sword fight. In it's fucking a greatest very film bad of all film. Time. Yeah, I already have it as a 10 yeah. out of 10. Why do I hate it? Going my way, nothing happens for two hours and then a church burns down and that's it. Yeah. Well, I genuinely don't remember the plot of the movie. Awesome. Okay. Uh, it's the preacher one with differences about preaching. I remember yeah. now, but like I looked at this list while we were making it. Case in point, I almost skipped right over it. Speaking of number eight, going my way. <laughs> going my way. <laughs> Rebecca. Oh. Going my way is very, very boring, but I actually do respect some of the decisions they made in the movie. It's boring, but its main offense is boring. I agree mostly with Ian. I would say there's redeemable qualities, but it's nowhere near as good redeemable as, Redeemable like, qualities, not enough to make it good. It's not enough to make it the top half of the good list. I agree yeah. with all of those things, but about Rebecca. No. Because <laughs> that's my number eight. Rebecca's that movie's bad. dog shit. I don't know why it has good. a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. All right, number seven, All the King's Men. All the King's Men. All the King's Men. Wow, that's funny. Universal. Long story short, there's the first act of the movie, which is the setup to a movie, and then there's the second and third acts, which is the payoff of a different movie. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't feel like the same Jarring movie at all. and weird. Never have I seen narration completely heel turn the plot of a film. Yep. Yep. Like two lines. Very and we're dealing weird. with different characters. Not good yep. at all. Terrible. Number six, Mrs. Miniver. Yep. Mrs. Miniver. Oh, we same. all got freaking Mrs. Miniver. Better oh. piece of propaganda than how uh, all the King's Men. I still, to this day, have it as the strongest five out of ten because I don't know if I like it or not like it. So it's in the middle of the list. Yeah, that's what a five is. Yep. Yeah. You know what? It'd be better if there wasn't just propaganda and nothing else. Yeah. There's almost a good story in there. Yep. A lot of these lower ranked ones, it's like there's almost something good here. Yeah. Yep. But there isn't. Absolutely. Except for Hamlet. <laughs> Number five, the best years of our lives. Okay, we're getting into some all right movie territory. Why do we have the same fucking list? I don't know. How green was my valley? Oh. The real greatest picture. <laughs> so, Best Years of Our Lives is slapping. It's got great themes and great messages, and it could have been even better, but as it stands, it's pretty good. I think it's close to a mid... Uh, I don't remember if I gave it a five or a six, so I'm just saying it's right here. Uh, between the five and the seven that I have. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like, I, I enjoyed it. I think some of the storylines were definitely stronger. Like, Homer's storyline was very strong, but it's the one they focused the least on, which pissed me mm -hmm. off to no end. How Green is really good, and I like the transformative story about how living in this town kills the soul. But Jesus fucking Christ, they keep switching what the movie's about. There was the strike, there was the kid might never walk again, his father, all this shit, and it just keeps changing. Oh, is that the, the coal mining one? Coal mining okay. one. And then he gets, he ends up in the coal mine, and he never gets out, and it's like, well, that's a little depressing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I would say that number four for me, though, has got to be How Green Was My Valley. Everything you just said, I'm going to mirror real quick. But on top of that, the themes, the messages, the the way that the town slowly corrupts the main character. Oh, my God. Dude, and the fact that it's in black and white hampers it because if it had color, you could see the color drain from the movie. But even as it stands, it's so brilliant. I love it. Yeah, it does it through emotions instead of through the color. All right. For sure. Casablanca, you guys are going to have this one way higher. This is our first yep. deviation, probably our only deviation. They really liked it. I, th I went from a four to a seven. Still, oh, it's okay. It's good. It's fine. It is not a movie that I love as much as everybody else. That being said, it is not bad. Right. You're wrong. But best years of our lives. Powerful yep. is how I would describe this film. But there's so much fat around the power that it kind of contains it in a way that bogs it down. And yeah. the film gets a little generic towards the end. Very true. I Very agree. True. All right, number three. We're in the podium. top tier podium, podium. Position. Bronze medal. Let's go for it. Top tier bronze medal. Bronze medal for me is Gentleman's Agreement. This movie is fantastic. Oh, how green. Uh, I actually really like how green. I think the messages and themes, like Jake was pointing out, how the town slowly corrupts them, it's interesting. It felt pretty brisk. I think the pacing of the movie wasn't too, too bad, which is a fucking tough ask for a lot of these movies, let me tell you. 
So I, I ended up really liking that one. I didn't think I would as well. It's a good story about how the place that gives you everything can also be the place that takes everything away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really interesting because a lot of people yep. do not deviate from their hometown and end up rotting. And it's, it's I tough. feel that as someone who still lives in the town that they were born and raised in. Yeah. It, it, some days, to get a little melodramatic, some days it feels like like living in that town is like choking me. And I'm like, I need to get the fuck yes, out Yes, and here. literally it's choking them because it's a coal mining town. It is. And so it's a lot of those aspects that make me really like and respect that movie more than some of the other movies that I have below it. And have that statement that can last. Yeah. Uh, does your statement last? Your number three, Mud? Yeah, my statement is Casablanca. Yeah. The movie isn't stupid. You're, You're stupid. I didn't say the movie was stupid. I just don't <laughs> like it as much as you guys do. <laughs> I'm talking louder, therefore I'm right. Oh, yeah. Anyways. Casablanca bumps. Casablanca slaps. Great character work. Great direction. Great everything. I love the script. I love the flashbacks. I love the characters. It deserves its status as, like, one of the best, in yes. my personal opinion. I think it's a little overrated, but not too overrated. Yeah, haha. -ha, more like number two, Casablanca Mud. You have it a lower position. The movie's not stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> I gotta say, this movie is absolutely brilliant. There were even points during that review, because Joe Quinn guessed it on that review, it's where true. he pointed out details that made me love this movie that I already love more. Like, he kept talking about, like, the lighting through the blinds, oh. making it look like they were stuck in prison. Yeah, that was a really cool Because movie, they really were good. trapped in this place. Like, oh my god. There's so many brilliant aspects that, like, the more I think about it, it's like, mmm, yes, hitting those themes. So Casablanca is easily the second best of the 40s best pictures. Me with the gentleman's agreement, because, all right, let's be honest. That movie might have some of the best theming and a best picture that we're going to see for a long fucking time. I agree. The theming in the gentleman's agreement, the fact that it didn't pull any punches like um, Emil Zola, for example, where it just doesn't say anything about the actual thing that's going on. Like... Emil Zola is just a punching bag of the best pictures podcast. It, it really, we, last couple episodes, we've really just beaten the shit out of life with Emil Zola. But this movie, it's just so amazing in every single facet. The editing's really good. The dialogue is phenomenal. Gregory Peck's acting, amazing. It will stand the test of time, sadly, forever. Yes. Yeah. It shouldn't it, be as it relevant. It shouldn't be as relevant as it is. But it 60 is. years or some shit later, but it is. That being said, it's just such a powerful piece that I cannot give it anything less than a 10, and it's my number two. I agree with everything you just said, but I'm not talking about Gentleman's Agreement. I'm talking about a different film that I feel the exact same way about, which is The Lost Weekend. Mm -hmm. yep. The acting, the directing, the editing, everything, the script, beautiful, start to finish, yep. timeless, relevant themes that are sadly still relevant today, though... I don't want to say less sad, but like alcoholism and it's systemic kind of, racial discrimination. Yeah. No, alcoholism is not as problematic as systemic racial. Uh, it, it, alcohol, yeah. Alcoholism is more easily dealt with. How about that? Yes. And alcoholism is also media glorified, too. So it seems cooler than yeah. racism. It's still a serious problem, and I'm not trying to make light yes. of it or be like, oh, one problem's worth the other. It's just like, yes. What puts gentlemen? What's agreement? more powerful? Yeah, what's yes. more powerful is what kind of decided these two. And yes. for me, Lost Weekend takes the silver medal for Completely that. But that does not mean it is anything less than fantastic. Yep. Up until that point when we watched Lost Weekend, we had been lamenting the fact that the best pictures of the 40s were kind of shit. And then Lost Weekend came along and it was like, what did you just fucking say to me? Uh, Yeah, haha, more like, Ian, do you want to just talk about Lost Weekend together? Because Dude, this is a fucking masterpiece. Lost Weekend. So the thing is, it's like an episode of The Twilight Zone, but about alcoholism, but also super fucking serious and not like that. Not like that, what's going to happen next to this main character? I love The Twilight Zone. <laughs> and this serious, slow, deep dive that is meticulously well-crafted in dialogue, meticulously well-edited, interesting framing, interesting shadow work, interesting mirror work, interesting effects when he's drunk, staggering down the street with the um, rear projection going by. Yep, yep. You can see it in his face. There's so much good facial acting in that movie. Every single thing just oozed almost perfection. And the scene where he hid the bottle up at the top. And yeah. I even said later, he's going to see the shadow. And remember, he put it up there. He was trash. He didn't fucking remember. He was laying down. And he sees it up there. And I'm like, I fucking called it. There's every little thing in that movie. The slow thing where he drinks to write. And then he was going to sell his typewriter for more drink. 
it's cyclical. It's a disgusting cycle of the disease and not a lot of diseases like that because alcoholism is a mental disease are portrayed properly in film. And this is the best portrayal of a mental disease, like a actual like panicking anxiety filled thing that I've ever seen in a film that I might ever see in a film. Mm. And that is why The Lost Weekend is my favorite one. The Lost Weekend is a very rare case for me because I have a rule where if I watch a movie for the first time, I debate it going in my favorite movies if I really mm-hmm. like it. I'll like I'll watch it. I'll be like, wow, that was a 10 out of 10. I might put it on my favorites list. Yeah. This subverted that. I watched it. Oh, my God. It's one of my favorites. Just put it on the list immediately. It's yeah. fucking brilliant. And it's easily <laughs> the best best picture we've seen so far. Yeah. It is one of the best best pictures of all time. I put this up there with maybe Return of the King. Gladiator. Maybe Gladiator. You yeah. know I love Gladiator. I'm a big stand for Gladiator. I cannot wait to watch <laughs> Gladiator. So fucking Gladiator, baby. But uh, no, Lost Weekend absolutely is a masterpiece. And I do not use that word lightly. Yeah. So my voice number one. It's, it's gentleman's, gentleman's agreement. agreement. Yeah. Shut up, Ian. <laughs> it's gentleman's agreement. <laughs> we said it in unison perfectly. I hate when we do that. Exactly what you said about themes, timeless themes. But what puts gentleman's agreement above Lost Weekend for me? And make no mistake, Lost Weekend was fucking phenomenal, yeah, and I agree yeah. with everything you guys say. But what puts gentleman's agreement above it for me is the complexity that gentleman's agreement takes, and it's not just simply like, hey. Be nice to the Jewish people. Yep. There's complex layers to it. And you see that in characters who like that secretary who worries about letting the quote bad Jews in yep. unquote, you know, and it really takes the walk a mile in my shoes method seriously to the point where like Gregory Peck's character by the end of the movie, I wouldn't have been surprised if he like actually just started identifying as Jewish. Yeah. You know, like it, it kind of became a part of his identity. Yeah. Seeing all the other characters and like his his girlfriend who's like, oh, I hate anti-Semites. And I was so upset that I didn't even stay for caviar. And it's like, you're not helping. And it was that that whole like, you know, that method of like, well, indifference doesn't help either. You know, and the layers of it, you know, like indifference doesn't help. Trying to satiate the other side doesn't help. Only putting it in your face, rubbing their nose in it is really what changes it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just think, sadly, that movie is also timeless because... People suck. Gentleman's Agreement is not only my favorite film from the 40s, but it is my currently favorite Best Picture winner. I think for the same reasons that All Quiet was my favorite for so long, which is just the messages of this film are more complex than I would expect for the time, but also are so well articulated that I can't think of a movie that's come along since then Yeah, no, and does it better. I love when we look at all of these movies, because when we think about a lot of these older movies we always go oh it's gonna be a play it's gonna be we talked we talked agnosium in the 30s about oh it's shot like a play this one's actually shot like a movie and i like this because the dialogue feels more modern we're getting to a point where more of it more and more of it is starting to feel modern and only the dog shit ones aren't it's not like all of them aren't modern anymore because even even like some of the better ones still have like weird cinematic elements from the 30s yeah it's like oh it's not really like good (laughs) but like i would call the fade to black transition pretty annoying yeah unless uh, it's used effectively but generally it's just overused that being said we're getting into territory where the films are starting to feel more modern more consistently right yeah well, that's all that, I wanted to say yeah let's that's all right on that note supposed to be quick check out the 1950 hit Epic film all about Eve, the 23rd best picture winner ever. See you then.